So there we go. Let's get into Latin resources. JD, you've gone deep into deep into Brazil, mate, which is well known for its fine uh, meat and grills, but also is pumping out some lithium. Have you ever had a Brazilian barbecue where they, they pull the meat off the skewer and everything? I have. I think there's a good restaurant in Subi that does that sort yes, of thing. Yes, yes. That, that would have been a good place to host this segment. But uh, anyway, that's gone. I'm fasting. I'm starving. Right, JD, Latin Resources, Selena Lithi- Lithi- Selena's Lithium Project in Brazil. What's happening? Yeah, we'll just unpack this a little bit. We're by no means geologists and the, the company has come out with drill results today, but we're just going to try and put that in a bit of perspective with what the company's trying to do in Brazil. So they've come out with a few different holes, grading about 1.5% lithium oxide at their Kalina deposit. And uh, this Salinas project is based around that Kalina deposit. So that's about 13 million tonnes at 1.2% lithium oxide. But the the prospect becoming a deposit just to the west, Kalina West, has really caught the eye of a lot of people. And it's what they're testing now. So they're in the midst of a 65,000 metre drill campaign, so quite a huge one with eight rigs on site. And six of them are testing that that western area there. So the, the ge- geologists are trying to test whether that pegmatite system all holds together and they can expand upon those those 13 million tonnes. So Exact same, pretty much the exact same resource size as Mount Ida for uh, red dirt their resource and pretty similar grade 13 million ton at 1.2 percent so give everyone a scale of how big this thing is yeah and it's it's something i'll get into more because it's their goal to to ultimately grow this quite a bit so just a bit more background on brazil they're in the the minas geras region no idea if i'm pronouncing (laughs) that right where's that jd (laughs) Uh, in the middle of brazil and that in portuguese is actually mining related that name comes from mining so it's a very well-known area Rio, Vale are all in there. Centaurus and other ASX play are in that that same region there. Good infrastructure, roads, power, water availability. So a great jurisdiction for mining by all accounts. So Sigma Lithium is the company that a lot of uh, Latin resource investors hope to emulate one day. So they've got the Grotto do Serial, again, another one I'm probably pronouncing wrong, project about 75 kilometers away and this is a a company that's now capped at in aussie dollar terms six billion dollars they're listed in in canada so just today i read um on the the financial times that the company has received final approvals they're going to be mining this week and shipping their um first spodumene concentrate by the end of next week or the week after so they're they're on the cusp of production now I think they're a lot bigger, aren't they? They're, I think they're about an 80 million ton resource. That's right. They're, they're significantly bigger. But um, interestingly, if you roll back the clock about five years, Sigma's very first resource was of a similar size to, like you said, Mount Ida, and more importantly, a similar size to what Latin Resources now has. So the plan, I think, and what a lot of investors are hoping for is that they can really grow that massively. So... I think Sigma has provided a great precedent and obviously the the five years it's now taken in which they've grown the resource sixfold, built the processing plant, mill and everything, they're now on the cusp of production, was uh, disrupted quite heavily by COVID as well. So the plans are um, from analyst points of view and management that that five years that it took Sigma could be dramatically shortened and depending on the scale of this thing, how Kalina West turns out in the end, they could be in production by 2025. So key next steps for this company, resource upgrade. Everyone's really keen to see how this Kalina West deposit ties in with Kalina, whether it's all holding together. We've got the PFS coming out in the June quarter. The company said today they're still on track for that. DFS early 2024. And just one other thing I wanted to flag, and I think it's worth bearing in mind that a lot of the analyst reports you'll read relating to this company, uh, um, they're building in a lot of expectation about growing that resource. So a lot of the the tonnage involved, our mentioned is 20 million tonnes to 40 million tonnes. So that's about a, a threefold increase on the current resource. So for all new investors and experienced investors as well, they'll know that these stocks, when they're priced in the market, have a lot of expectations baked into them. So 
it might not be completely dependent on what the company comes out with, but when the expectations are high, the share price might not move quite as according to what you think, despite it being a positive announcement. So it's something I'm definitely going to follow and keen to see how, how the results play out and how they impact the share price. Do, do you see him as a bit of a, I guess we're going to talk about essential metals later where you've got Albemarle that have uh, put the big takeover bid in for Lion Town. They're, they're obviously trying to source, they're sourcing raw materials to run these plants. So you've got Albemarle building a lithium hydroxide plant in South Carolina, I think. So they would be seeking uh, raw materials and South America is on their doorstep. Do you see them as companies like this that are heading towards production as uh, potential takeover targets? Yeah, that's a tough one. They're still at quite an early stage. And I think a lot of uh, companies that are like senior majors that are following this story are waiting for that drilling to, to play out and see where it sort of goes from there. There's a lot of rumours that Sigma would be interested, but I think they've got a lot to focus on with their production starting this week, as I mentioned, to see before they get their hands dirty with, a, with another acquisition. I think it's that timing as well when they're going through the PFS stage. Um, I think it, it, trying to get funding during that stage until it's all very proven up. Like look at Ausgold, for instance, had studies for a while and they still can't get funding. So I think they're in that period of where it's going to be difficult to get funding until it's all proven up, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and like you sort of mentioned with Sigma, they're coming out of that stage and they're moving toward free cash flow production once the, the CapEx has been spent now. They're going to be yeah. generating money from this week onward, you know. So yeah. for them it would make a lot more sense, say, in a year or so's time once they've built uh, built a bit of cash in the – in the bank and god we, we've gone from gold 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 to lithium 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 today trav hang essential on, hang on west gold's not gold oh yeah no Sorry, well, previous days but we're doing we're doing a double bang of lithium here so yeah, yeah. look it could have been uh, as he said if that pegmatite dike was uh filled with lithium imagine bloody how good that would have been for lithium him. day today 